Here at Defunct Games, we're working hard to make sure that games don't fall through the cracks. That's why we're going to tackle lasers, pits, and religion in today's review roundup. The show where we talk about three new games in only a few minutes. Today we're going to be taking a look at Pity Pit, Can Androids Pray Blue, and Archaica, The Path of Light, which is what you're watching me play right now. But we're going to get back to Archaica in a few minutes, because first I want to talk about what has to be the most existential mech game of all time. Alright, let me paint the scene for you. Can Androids Pray Blue is about a couple of android mechs who are badly wounded after what appears to be a devastating war. They can't move their arms or get up, so the two spend their last remaining hours talking to each other about what it means to live and die. As one of them curses at the inevitability of death, the other finds comfort in the Bible and what they've learned about the teachings of God. This is the whole game. So, I feel like I should confess right at the start that I'm not religious. It's not something I talk about in my reviews very often because it's rarely relevant, but it definitely is in this case. I get the feeling that Can Androids Pray Blue is intended to be a moving and thought-provoking story about coming to grips with your own mortality. But this sophomore release from A Priori Digital is so preoccupied with preaching at me that it never connected on an emotional level. This is what I would call a dialogue simulator. The two androids can't move, so all you're doing is choosing what Courtney says to Beatrice and waiting for the sun to rise. The whole thing takes about 20 minutes to complete and feels like it's more of a short story than a game. The truth is, I'm not sure who this is for. I'm certainly not opposed to this type of narrative-focused game, even with religious themes, but the story is neither compelling nor deep enough to fill up the all-too-brief runtime. I would say that perhaps believers may find a deeper meaning in all of this, but the profanity-laced script seems out of place if that's the target audience. The whole game just left me completely baffled. Look, I'm not saying that Can Androids Pray Blue is a bad game, but it's definitely not for me. The scenario these two mechs find themselves in is interesting, but the conversation is too preachy and the writing left me cold. This is a short game that lacks the emotional weight that you'd expect from these heavy topics. Yeah, even at a brisk 20 minutes, I couldn't wait for this game to end. Long before arcades were crowded with one-on-one -on -one fighters, race car cabinets, and rows of VR helmets, they were populated by simple games where the goal was to just earn a bunch of points. The arcades may be gone, or at least temporarily closed due to the virus, but at least the spirit of those classic games lives on in Pity Pet, a brand new game from Panda Indie Studio that can best be described as a Dig Dug roguelike. It's a lot of fun and easy to recommend, but don't get too excited. Because even though this is a game about digging down a giant well, Pity Pit isn't very deep. When the evil devil Johnson kidnaps Horatio's wife Gwendolyn, he jumps into a giant mine in order to get her back. This sends him through five procedurally constructed levels in an effort to mine materials, craft tools, and dig his way to his loved one. This involves a fair amount of platforming and dealing with enemies who are shooting at you and digging tunnels of their own. The trick is to stay alive long enough to save Gwen and earn a high score. Like I said at the top, this is a simple game, but it's not without a few tricks up its sleeve. You'll often locate randomly placed power-ups, bombs, and more destructive digging tools. Horatio will be able to bounce on enemies from above and use his shovel or pickaxe to push them back. Each level is filled with both hidden and obvious coins to pick up, all of which you can use to buy new equipment and extra lives. 
But don't think you're just gonna plow through this game with brute force, because Pity Pit is surprisingly tough and requires the player to devise a strategy for every bad guy. But even with the added complexity of crafting and collecting, Pity Pit gets old quickly. The $5 asking price is about right for something like this, since you'll tire of the repetition quickly and only check back in short bursts. That said, the retro look and soundtrack is great, and I can see it fitting in perfectly next to Pac-Man, Load Runner, and Dig Dug. If you love 2D platformers, vertical scrolling, and rescuing women in peril, then you're gonna dig Pity Pit. Oh, the mirror puzzle. A staple of adventure games everywhere. It's the old too common brain teaser where you'll need to position mirrors in order to move the light across the room. If you ever wished that somebody would turn this bite-sized puzzle into something a lot more complicated, then let me introduce you to Archaica, the Path of Light. After impressing PC gamers back in 2017, this debut release from Two Mammoths is finally finding a home on both the Xbox and Switch. And not a moment too soon, as far as I'm concerned. This is an atmospheric puzzler that is set in a mystical and ancient world full of lasers and mirrors. There's a story here about being the light bearer and needing to travel down the path in order to save the world from impending doom, but it's really just here to get us from one good looking puzzle to the next. We'll collect the story piece by piece as we travel across the land and discover the secrets of this fantasy setting. What impressed me the most is the world that they've constructed in Archaica. Every single step of our adventure looks different, with both subtle and obvious changes to ramp up the tension. Even though the playfield is often quite small, it's cozily nested inside of a much larger and more impressive space. It's here where you'll find hidden crystals and tablets, which you can use to earn hints to the solution and learn more about our hero's journey. This is one of those puzzle games that starts with a relatively simple concept and then just keeps adding on to it with each passing level. You begin with mirrors that bend the light in predictable ways, only to quickly find mirrors that will split the feed and bounce the laser in weird angles and even change the color. On top of using new pieces, you'll also find levels that require you to power certain generators, combine colors, and much, much more. It does a good job of easing you into the challenge and teaching us everything that we need to know in order to conquer the final puzzles. And don't worry about getting stumped because there are more than enough crystals to help guide you through even the toughest levels. Archaica The Path of Light is the kind of puzzle game that focuses on one specific thing and gets it right. Even though I got a little sick of moving around mirrors after a while, I absolutely love the moody and atmospheric level designs. This is a gorgeous game that gives us a lot more story and depth than we normally get in a puzzler. Yeah, after this debut release, I can't wait to see what's next for Two Mammoths. Hey, thanks for watching our review. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new reviews and features almost every day. Now here's the question I have for you. What are you going to be playing this weekend? Look, I have a bunch of games that I need to finally get through, including Hyper Parasite and Foregone. What about you? In other news, we'll be back next week with a brand new episode of Game Over, followed by an update about my quarantine situation. In the meantime, I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.